In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to St Mary's Church in Long Crendon for our service of Holy Communion today. My thanks this week go to Jenny who's reading, John preaching and leading our prayers, Chris on music, Louise behind the camera, and to Cathy for her post-production. Once again, Cathy's drawing on pictures from all three of our churches for these recordings. Hear the words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask his forgiveness and peace. We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing the Gloria. The Gospel reading is taken from St John, chapter 6. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? whose father and mother we know. How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, 
Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May these words of mine please him, as I rejoice in the Lord. Yes, we're back on bread again, but this time there's a twist, and it's not a plaited loaf. Last week's reading ended with two special verses, and in my sermon last week I spoke about them. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This week our Gospel reading started with the same verses. Perhaps it's the lecturing compilers making the point that this is a key statement. That we should not, must not, ever forget that Jesus is our bread of life. But let me just look back at some of the other readings set for today. In the Old Testament we hear a different message. It's that of Elijah's despair being changed into hope. Elijah had been trying to preach the message from God and had fallen at almost every turn. His life was under threat, so he journeyed into the wilderness with the intention of giving up completely and dying. As he lay down under a solitary broom tree, he fell asleep, and felt an angel touch him, saying, Get up and eat, and there beside him was bread and water, life-giving, thirst-quenching, and spiritually uplifting. As a result, he was able to leave the wilderness, trekking for forty days, accepting God's call once again and having the renewed strength to carry on. It's a strong message that should and must apply to us, for we too get knocked back from time to time. We can seem to face apparently insurmountable odds and need to take a break to reset ourselves, regroup, refuel both physically and spiritually, and carry on with God's work. In the epistle this week, St Paul talks clearly about putting evil aside, and working hard to support ourselves, and therefore being able to help others. But I guess at this time it's a particularly hard message for those who are perhaps suffering as a result of the job losses from the pandemic. I have huge sympathy for those who can find themselves in such circumstances. It's not fun, can be totally demoralising, and without support can lead to utter despair. I have been there and have a collection of those t-shirts. But whatever our circumstances, we, can, we are all called to be honest in all that we do. And when we can, to support those who need it most. It is suggested that our Gospel reading is a classic bit of St John turning complex theology into a story to make the whole concept so much easier to understand. I'm not sure I'm going to agree. It's still complex, wonderfully so, and the theology is still deep and almost impossible to comprehend at times. 
Jesus had a problem with some of the people who had been around him in the crowd. They knew him as the village carpenter and were struggling with the idea and the point that he was bringing forward that God was his father. This new Jesus was not comprehensible to them. They thought they knew Jesus, the man. They could not understand that Jesus could also be God. However, my take on this is that Jesus was saying that there are times when we have to accept those things that we do not understand or run contrary to our apparent knowledge, when perhaps we need to suspend our disbelief and accept God's way. Jesus also said, No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. This can be taken as meaning that Jesus is saying we need to turn away from this finite life that will end in our death and choose his life, the Christ life that does not end. We are, in effect, challenged to choose to live Christ's life through what we do, how we act and react to people and situations. Our life, if we wish to commit ourselves to be followers of Jesus Christ, needs to be as a result of responding to the direct call from God that we receive. It's about listening to God and not just making demands of God. God is listening when we pray, but we must remember to give him the time to reply back and give us the answers that we are seeking. A number of years ago, there was a trend, especially among the younger generations, to wear a wristband that asked, what would Jesus do? This, I suggest, is what we should ask ourselves if or when we find ourselves in difficult or unusual circumstances. Take a breath. Stop. Don't rush into hasty decisions. Think. What would Jesus do right here, right now? What is the right thing to do, not just for us, but for God and for our whole world? Our reading ends with Jesus saying, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Taken literally, this reading appears rather grisome. Taken within the concept of Holy Communion, which Jesus was to introduce at the Last Supper, it makes much more sense. Noting, of course, that as a church, we do not believe that the bread and wine at Communion actually become flesh and blood. We need the living bread in our lives in order to be fulfilled and to live. In the name of our life-sustaining and hope-giving Lord. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I believe in God. The, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth. I, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. As we sit or kneel, so we pray. Lord Jesus, our bread of life, 
We ask that as we listen to Scripture, we are encouraged to continue to seek you, our bread of life, and pray that we remember to listen for your reply. Hear us, Lord, today as we pray to you. We pray for our church worldwide, for the Church of England, for this, our Diocese of Oxford, our Deanery of Aylesbury, and this benefits of Longcrendon, Chesley and Nether Winchenden. We give thanks and pray for Richard, our vicar, hoping that he and his family have had a restful holiday. We pray for all those who give their time and enthusiasm to lead and serve in our churches. Father, we pray for all nations around the world, for healing of the nations and for peace. We thank you, Lord, for this world in which we live. We hear so much about climate change. Help us, Lord, to take notice and respond. We pray, Father, for our three village communities. And we give thanks for all those who serve these communities directly in so many ways. We give thanks for all those who run businesses in our communities. And we hope that as we come out of this pandemic, all such people have a chance to rebuild their businesses and to make a living once again. We pray for all those working in our healthcare services, in our NHS, hospitals, care homes, and caring for patients at home. Father, we pray for all those who are sick in body, mind and spirit. Remembering, Lord, that we are all members of your body and that when one suffers, we all suffer together. We ask for comfort and healing powers for those in any distress. Lord Jesus, we pray for all those who are bereaved and feeling lost. May they feel comforted by your love. In a moment of silence, let us bring to mind all those known to us who need our prayers at this time. Lord Jesus, teach us to seek your living bread and the water of life, so that, like Elijah, we may be strengthened to bring about the kingdom of God here in our communities. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. And so the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And so from this house of prayer, through our villages and towns, your song of praise rings out. Each home becomes a church, beacons of service and of prayer, light against the darkness, with angels and archangels, to glorify your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praise as Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. 
He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Except through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we receive these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and, and honour and, and glory and power be yours forever and, and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. Amen. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our hymn.
And now I encourage you to close your eyes and bow your heads and receive the blessing that God wants to give each and every one of us, wherever we are. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.